apart from improvement in communication, what else? What went well? I don't know, so I don't know if it was just me, but I felt like the pace was quite fast, maybe from yeah. previous weeks or something like that. First first period, I was wrecked already. Yeah, yeah, it was quicker. Why do you think that is? Um, getting more confident, covering more ice. I know everyone's zipping around a bit faster. Yeah. So you had to use one word to call, to summarize that? Confidence? Yeah. What What do we try and do every game? Improve. Yeah, it's an improvement. It's kind of expected. But it's it's good that it happens. Um, it's it's one of the things that I know I, I constantly, well not constantly, but fairly regularly remind you all to do. And I don't know if any of you actually have. It'd be interesting to hear if any of you have done so. Is to go back around about this stage through the season and go back and watch the video of game one, the first game that we played, and just see the difference. Um, sometimes you can get to this stage, and you, if you haven't won as many games as perhaps you're hoping to, you can look back on it and you can say, "By golly, we might not be winning games, but I tell you what, we've improved." Uh, and that's that's a big thing. Um, this particular season is a little bit out of whack. Uh, and the reason it's a bit out of whack is because the previous season was quite short and this season is quite short. I think it's only like nine or 10 rounds. And um, at the end of last season, we pushed a lot of people up and brought in a lot of new players, whereas the Southern Lights and the Big Deals didn't do that anything like as much as we did. They did to an extent, but not not to the same level. So there's quite a few players in those two teams that have played anything up to maybe 20 games, um, whereas most of you have played six, six games if it was your first season. That makes a big difference, um, just in terms of general confidence and the ability to zip around the ring. Um, so that makes a difference. Anything else? How was that power play? There wasn't any. Was there wasn't any. There was there no penalties. Did we get yeah. free nachos? <laughs> <laughs> were they any good? They were very tasty. <laughs> awesome. So there, there's a good reward for staying out of the penalty box. Huh? And interestingly, because the game was a bit more intense and a bit more involved, the fact that we managed to stay out of the penalty box for both teams was pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. You managed to get your six down on the ice and avoid tripping and those sorts of things, which is which is good. Um, normally around this stage, the penalty count starts to go up rather than down, um, but that's that's quite a pleasing thing. Um, so no penalty kills, no power plays. Um, how about our um, face-offs? How are they going? We'll have a look at them in a minute because I've got a lot of them on video. How about Hazy's? Did Hazy's get to do many defensive zone face-offs? I don't remember doing any. Yeah, I don't think he did any either. I went through the entire video. There might have been maybe one. <laughs> How about Mac Eddie's? Did you guys get a few defensive zone face-offs? Yeah, we had quite a few, I think. Wasn't there? Why, why is that, do you reckon? Why the difference? I mean, there were quite a few shots on goal. Mm. Yeah. Hazy's outshot the Mac Daddies. I think it was 17 to 11 in the end. It's quite a big difference. Uh, and um, oh, I keep forgetting his name. That's terrible. How can I forget your goalie's name? Um, Is it Jackson? Jackson was freezing a puck a lot. But pretty good shots too. He didn't have a lot of choice. Uh, Lily was tending to bunt the pucks into the corner, whereas Jackson was tending to freeze them. Not a bad thing. Uh, what do we know about defensive zone face-offs? Good scoring opportunity for the yeah, uh, opportunity team. Opportunity, They're an excellent scoring opportunity. Uh, and, and in fact, the, Hayes, the Mac Daddy's got a couple of really good scoring opportunities from it. Didn't manage to convert them just yet, but certainly the opportunities were created. And if we can continue to create opportunities, this is good. The opportunities eventually turn into goals. Um, were we shooting?
Someone's got a snotty nose, but they're not answering the question. Well, were we shooting on the net? Yeah, I'd say we were. Yeah, it was quite a lot of shooting. It was good. It's good, good shot count. Um, both both teams were concentrating on getting shots away, which was which again puts pressure on the opposition goalie and forces mistakes and creates opportunities. And when we when that happens, we get the chance to um, to score goals. Um, shitty dribblers, did they happen? Yeah, there was a few of them. A couple, wasn't there? So we need to work on that. Um, we'll have a look at them on the video too. Um, we were following up on our rebounds, all those sorts of things. On the whole, they were. Um, we're going to be doing a bit of work at training this week on containing and checking for board battles and just the management of that. We're getting better at it, but we need to be a bit better at it still. Uh, and I'll, we'll go through that probably more. Um, I actually need to do a little video so we can kind of explain how it works. And if I get a chance to tomorrow morning, I might see if I can video a couple of examples of it. I need enough people to go along tomorrow morning and help. Um, depends if Gaddy goes along. If any of you are going to tomorrow morning stick and puck at um, at Ice HQ, uh, I'll we'll, we'll do a little video and see if we can't record uh, what I mean by check and contain. As I know, I've explained it in the change room before games, but it's not the same as actually doing it on the ice. You get an idea, but it doesn't really translate into into doing it effectively. Do we mark up in the slot? Not always. Yeah, but mostly we're, we're getting better. Um, I, I don't expect you guys to be perfect at this, but anything getting better at it. Jason, you're having a party there in the background. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we're getting better at it, and that's important. I, this is a beginner's league, and, and even at the elite level, you don't expect players to do things perfectly, but we, we are most definitely getting better at it. Doesn't mean we're getting it right all the time, but we're, we're getting better at it. And when we are getting it wrong, we're recognizing it and then we're fixing it. And that's you know, one of the steps to improving what you do is recognizing when you've made a mistake and then trying to fix it. And also trying to work out why you make the mistake in the first place, which is which is really important because if we can change those circumstances, we're less likely to find ourselves in the position where we do something like a shitty dribbler or we leave a player unmarked in the slot. We can work out why that's happening and address those things and it's less likely to happen in the first place. So we'll look at a few of those things now. We'll start looking at the videos. Uh, make sure I've got the right folder. Um, I'm gonna go through some, I wanna go through a, little, a distance management thing first, which was actually quite a, a good little example of this. Um, when, when I talk about distance management, do, do you know what I mean by that? It's a defensive concept. Like as they're coming in to shoot, you know, when you like want to manage that distance and then yeah. when you want to kind of come up against them. Yep. I'll show you a little uh, animation first so you can kind of have a bit of a, a top-down look at it. Uh, and then we will look at what actually happened in one instance, which was, which was we actually we got it right, which I shouldn't be surprised about. Um, but it was good to see. So this is just an animation of defensive distance. The red, the red team are defending the green, the green team have the puck. Hopefully it will work. So you can see that the defending player doesn't get close to the attacking player until around about the hash marks, yeah? Yep. All right, this is the key to it. The other part is if you look, that red player is skating towards the goal. So they're actually skating like that, not like that. Why is that important? Because you want to try and stay on the inside and push them out. Exactly. But they can't. Seems, seems pretty obvious, doesn't it? It's, it's hard to tell when you're skating backwards because you, know, you, you can't look behind you, at least not as well as you can in front of you. But it's, it's an interesting thing to just to be aware of. So that's the kind of basic idea. Let's have a look and see what actually happened. This was um, quite a nice little example of it. Um, I'll show you, yeah, I've just got the one just here. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, 
Can you just replay it? Kind of just jumped all over the place. It's pretty quick, isn't it? Sorry about that. Let's watch it again. He's good at changing direction. <laughs> yeah, but more importantly, he's got the skill yeah. that he needed to do. And that what he needed to do was to take away that inside line and then make the challenge. So when when Jacob got close to, I'm not sure who that is that he's putting pressure on. I think that might be Mark. Mark Pottinger, I think. So you can see if we kind of step back a little bit, is Jacob skating back. <laughs> comes close and makes that challenge at around about the hash marks. So that's pretty close to perfect. Which forces Mark to do what? Well, it pushes him out and behind. Exactly. Now that part of the that part of the stage, it's actually gone really well. Let's watch what happens now after that. So that's that's an example of good play. Let, let's watch what happens next though. This is this is interesting. <laughs> Now what's happened? Both of them have followed him down behind the goal line. Is that good? Nah, not, not really. so much. We've got a winger doing the right thing. This is good. That and that. What are you guys doing there? <laughs> because here we have, hello, pass to me, please. Totally unmarked in the slot. And we got away with it that time because the puck didn't come out. But it could have very easily popped up high. Mark, uh, so Mark might have very, very easily been able to just pop a puck out past Jacob there and get it up to 22, who could have just gone tap. And there's a great big wide open net there, isn't there? So we need to be careful when we do that back check that if our teammate's doing the right thing, we don't then stuff it up and and put him put him in difficulty. Because here it's looking pretty good. We've got our two other players skating in everyone goes puck chasing All right. but you can see the, the initial uh, movement back there by Jacob was was a really good piece of distance management but then we got a little bit tangled up afterwards but on the whole like the first bit of that was good play All right. let's have a look at some defensive zone face-off. So I want to show you a, a, a really nice example. This is towards the end of the game. So when we do a defensive zone face-off, what are we trying to do? What are we trying to achieve? We're trying uh, to limit their opportunity to score on goal and try to get a breakout if we can. Yeah. So how do we do it? Make sure the players are marked up. Mm -hmm. um, and I think... Forward on this just a smidge and have a look at our setup. Is that right? Almost, well, I think. It to be a little bit further forward, but it looks okay. It's pretty close, isn't it? It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. I'd prefer if our D, and it, it's a personal preference thing, I'd prefer if our D was there. In that case. And I'd prefer if this player was there. And if I can't see where the other one is, actually, see he's back here, I'd prefer if he was there. See that? But I mean, these are minor tweaks. But we've certainly got Audrey's in the right spot. I think that's Jody there. I'm not sure who that is. That should be the D. And they've the, the Hazies have actually done something quite clever. They've put two forwards there. I didn't tell them to do that. They worked that out for themselves, which is nice because that adds a little bit of confusion to the defensive setup. Like, like, what do I do here? Who do I mark? Um, which is which is good because normally you would expect probably him to be maybe here or something. But you, you can change that. It's not set in stone. Let's see what happens. Mm 
Did the wingers do the right thing for the Mac Daddies? Yeah, looks like they're moving. Absolutely. They've moved on the drop of the puck. They're going straight into their positions. The puck's come out. It, it bobbled around a little bit, and then it got played out by the D up the bank, which is a good option. Let's see what happens. So have a look at what happened. I'm just going to roll that back a couple of frames. I want you to pay attention to what happens up here. You all see that? This is that D being up a little bit high. What's happened? One of, one of the defenders is challenged very high by, by, by the blue line. Watch what happens. <laughs> Audrey gets a shot. Nice play, Audrey. Thank you. And that's why. Defence gets confused in that situation. They see the puck coming out of the zone. It's very common for D to get a little bit mixed up in an um, attacking face-off. It's either a little bit of overconfidence, you know, we're going to score a goal here. Well, actually, it's pretty unlikely. Um, it's a set play for the defending team. They've got the advantage especially if they win the puck or it's a bit messy coming out of the face-off. Um, and have I shown you all the example of what can go horribly wrong in, a defense, in an attacking face-off? Yeah, I think you have. I'll just track it down again because it's always good for laugh, <laughs> especially because I'm the, the one who, I'm the butt of the joke, which makes it even better. Um, yeah, this is the one. <laughs> this is what can happen when it goes horribly wrong. Come on, Zoom. Would you please one day make my life easy? <laughs> this is what could happen when an attacking zone face-off goes horribly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it is really easy to we're well, not going to say easy but it's very common for those defensive zone face-offs to turn into great scoring opportunities um we're going to have a look now at what's this one why have i written this d no something happened here is it weird? Ah, uh, yes, here we go. On the topic of shitty dribblers. I think the Mac Daddies were a little bit lucky there. What happened? The defensive player got some pressure put on him and he did a shitty dribbler. Yep. But let's go back a few frames and have a look at the setup. So that's, that's Jacob going back to get the park. What's been set up against him? The one, two, two. Yeah, it's the one, two, two, isn't it? It's not perfect, but it's the one, two, two, four check. Um, we haven't taken the boards away because it hasn't quite been enough time, but he's certainly put under pressure. What's his passing option? Over or behind? Well, and if, if you look at where he is at that particular point in time, imagine that's you. Imagine you're Jacob and you've just picked up the puck and you look up the ice. Where do you see your teammates? 
Bear in across mind. on the other side of the net. Just turned around. That's all he sees. He sees his D right behind the net there. That's not very useful. So that's not an option. He sees that one and that one. Doesn't see over here. Okay, because he hasn't turned around far enough. He's basically just turned around and grabbed the puck. So instinct is going to be to make that pass, isn't it? Most of us would. It's like, he's my teammate. There's no one on him. I'm going to pass to him. And that's exactly what happens. A little bit lucky that I think that Zach couldn't quite get far enough ahead and get the, get the stick onto it because it was a perfect shitty dribbler opportunity. Um, how do we prevent that from happening in the future? Talking. Well, that's not very specific. Yelling up. Yeah. Or? Maybe trying to skate with the puck. Well, he was under pressure. I wouldn't, I would prefer to see a defensive player at that point pass rather than try and carry. Uh, it's that close to the net. It's a good idea to get, get the puck out of there fairly quickly. So probably not carry it much. Think about why you pass to places. It's passing is quicker. Yeah, think about why you're passing to places. Not how you're doing it, but why you... Why did Jacob make that pass? Because that's where he could see play it or could see options? That's where he could see options. So how do we change that? Uh, like the winger, winger could have called. Who's up? Yep. Center was out. Yep. If we look at it from the point of view of the, the way I teach the breakout, I'm going to draw some lines up on the top part of the screen just so that I'm going to use it as an example. If one of our defensive players has the puck back here, we should have a winger there. We should have a center doing this. The other D should either be there or here depending on whether or not we're going to pass behind or cover up one of their players. And this winger should be doing that. Instead, we have a center here and a winger here. And that's why it happened. Um, it's the, the, the importance in that situation of, of the center getting into the middle of the ice rather than drift, trying to drift away. It's so important. Because uh, it cuts down on the likelihood of that happen. If Jacob hadn't tried to pass up here, that would have been all right. Instead, he's tried to do that because he's seen these two players here and thought they were good options. I just drawn something rude on the screen. Sorry, I'll clear that. Um, but let's let's watch it again. So we'll go back to the first bit of it. Puck goes in. Now, in everyone's defense, the puck has come across from that side. It's taking a little bit of time to get there. Um, I think who's that wearing 20? I'm not sure exactly who that is. He's kind of doing the right thing. Um, at that point, the better option probably would have been for, um, for our goalie to yell out over. Because it's on Jacob's forehand and all he needed to do was go like that, run around the board's heart. That probably would have been the best option at that point. And the reason, one of the reasons why these two players are here is because the player, the players just come out of there anyway. So they're kind of already on that wrong side and the puck's moved around the back. That's where you need to be a little bit adaptable. But we certainly should have been hauling ass to get into the middle and hauling ass to get into the middle there rather than standing here going, oh, I'm just going to stand here. Um, that's one of the reasons why that's so important. 20 here is pretty close to in the right spot. Um, I'm not sure who that is from that angle, but anyway. Um, but you, you can kind of see how that, unfo that, that unfolds. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Yep. So he had a couple of options. The one he chose was a really bad one. Um, and again, it was because of the input he was getting from his eyes. Ta-da! <laughs> Let's have a look at another example of some play. Have any of you actually watched these videos or do you not watch them at all? I don't know. Yeah, I watch them. Yeah, I watch them too. You can grab highlights too if you want. Let me know about them and then we can use them as teaching points. 
because there are parts of the game that you can learn a lot from and other bits that kind of not much is happening. Uh, let's have a look at this one. Why do you think I singled out that little bit of video as an example? Can we see it again? Of course. Please. It seemed like a good sort of center forward switch. What do you reckon? Pretty much all of the players are marked. Yeah. Wingers are doing the right thing, are they? Wingers are up nice and high. Covering their players. Jody's tied up. I think that's, is that you? Luke? Luke, sorry. Oh, I'm terrible with names. Sorry, Jason, I think that's, is that uh, Chrissy who's got you tied up there, Jason? That is you, Jason, isn't it? Yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah that's Chrissy. She's got you pretty well tied up, isn't she? Yeah, you're not scoring a goal. She's got your stick off the ground. Uh, and Val's made a good um, a good decision to move back nice and early and force the early shot from a bad angle. It's good defence. There's only one thing we probably need to be aware of, and that is this one. We need to be watching that. But there's been a shot on the net. We're going to watch that and see what happens. That's understandable. But on the whole, it's a pretty good defensive play. I like it. Good example of good stuff. All right, let's have a look at some goals. All right, that all wasn't that many. <laughs> look at the Mac Daddy's goals first. Let's see how they happened. Thoughts? Just get it to the net. Yeah. It was a lucky, def lucky deflection, wasn't it? Good following up on rebounds. Yeah. There was a lot of a lot of rebound chasing. And in the end, it was just to fling it in the direction of the net and get a bit lucky. Because that's pretty much what it was. I, I'd like to say that the tipping was deliberate. But, but I think, honestly, it was a bit of luck. Uh, but you get that, you know. Linda Solmark's goal. There was a bit of luck in that. It's a pretty low percentage shot to take a shot from the other end with a goalie stick, but every now and then they go in. So give it a go. Any one of you remember Gretzky's famous quote? One of many, but this is a particularly relevant one. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So shooting mentality. Think I'm going to shoot the puck on the net. 
Sometimes they go in. Where'd the hog, where, where did the goal go? Five hole. Five hole. As usual. <laughs> they usually do. Uh, what's the thing that we can use to remember that? Fast hands, slow feet. Exactly. And we see it again and 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 then and then. Do you want to see that one again or are we done with it? I think we're done. Yep. All right. We'll look at the next one. What happened? Wow, it was a ripper of a shot to start with. It was a shot, wasn't it? Absolutely. Hitting <laughs> <laughs> um, off the off the edge of the pole, that was you know millimeter perfect. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm sure that Caitlin exactly meant to do precisely that. She nailed it. No, I know. I was so I was watching Lauren go out to challenge. Yep. Um, in the circle, and then I literally like I watched that challenge, and then I looked to my left and went, ah, oh, shit. And then the puck bobbed out, and then Caitlin just ripped that past me and like, yep, deserved that. That was a great shot. It was a good shot. Um, she was in exactly the right place. Um, got the pass right across to the slot. We in previous hockey schools, I've actually taught that exact move. Um, we haven't done it this season yet at hockey school, but we basically set people up so we get them to skate into the slot and get a one timer on the net. And it's a great scoring opportunity. It's the second best scoring opportunity after the old play rush. Um, let's see how it happened. How about that pixelation? It wasn't doing that a minute ago. What's um what's missing? Lauren's doing exactly the right thing there. She's gone out to put pressure on that player. That's good. Where one D is 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 occupying that space again. Good option. It's not the wrong thing to do by any stretch of the imagination. Possibly a little tiny bit deep, but you know, yeah, not doing anything bad. Someone missing though, isn't there? Another defender. Yeah. I, I think it's a change. I think a change was just fluffed a little bit. <laughs> Now, the really nice thing, too, is where Audrey was. If you look at where Audrey goes, that's really nice play there. She's moved right in close behind. See where Audrey is? So if you're the goalie, what are you having to think about? You know, three shooting options right there in front of you. Yeah, exactly. You can't cover all of them, can you? So if there was a, a rebound that popped out, there's two other forwards sitting there waiting to have a go at them. And what we need to work on, and we're going to work on this at training, which will help with that a little bit, is we're going to have a look quickly what happens with Lauren. Lauren initially does the right thing. All right. All right. So that's not a bad piece of containing. Possibly should have stopped a little bit earlier. So I'm just going to roll that back a couple of frames. Lauren probably should have stopped there. I'm not sure she can stop very well. Are you online? I don't know that you are, Lauren. We need to work on you stopping. Because if you stop here, you're going to kind of police this area. 
Whereas if you go in close, what happens? Pass goes around her. And we'll see that. Closes in, the option opens up. And then Katie was just in the right place and it was a nice pass. Uh, and the rest of the play we've we've seen and we'll, we've I stuck it up on the Facebook group because it was Katie's first goal and she was understandably quite excited as everyone is when they get their first goal. Even goalies. Goalies get pretty excited when they get their first goal. Um, so that's, you know, just good play. Um, it wasn't an awful lot we could have done about it. Lauren possibly could have just covered that a little bit differently. But to be honest, at C grade, that's a shit hot goal. It's really nice. Um, let's do it again. Both teams do it again. Sorry, am I keeping you awake? <laughs> um, before I show this next one, I just want to show some other stuff that's important just to remember. Down away. Who's heard of Charlie McAvoy? Yeah, plays at Boston. Yep. Yeah, is he one of the best defensive players in the NHL? Yeah, uh, fairly average. Pretty average, yeah. <laughs> no, he's pretty. He's good. He's good. Pretty good, yeah. Let's let's watch this bit of play. Uh, you'll understand why in a minute. From Coyle and Lindholm, they score. and the Preston tie for the power play goal. It's not how you try it. This pass is trying to go across, trying to hit Everly at the back door. Yeah. What's the point, do you reckon? Shit happens. Shit happens, and it's not your fault. <laughs> Sometimes just being there, having your stick in the right place actually ends up, ends up badly. There's worse ones than Charlie's one. There's one where um, a guy called Bennett from the Islanders bats one in across the face of the net from above the bar, above the goal line and scores an own goal. It's uh, honestly, I've scored own goals. I think I've scored about three of them and you remember them because they suck. But at the same time, if you're in the right place, sometimes you're just going to get unlucky. It's not your fault. How's that for bad luck? So that's Pam's Charlie McAvoy moment. They're going to start paying you eight and a half million dollars a year, Pam. <laughs> but what led up to it? What allowed it to happen? Our skills. No, oh, that's not very specific. That's a bit vague. What actually happened? Let's look at the play. That wasn't a skill thing. That was just that part of it was bad luck. I mean, but we didn't like. I didn't get it out there, and then you know, there's a couple of times and we didn't really get it out. Here's the thing: at this point in your career, skill errors are going to happen. Right? Skill errors are normal. We expect that. I expect you to fall over. I expect you to whiff on passes, all that sort of stuff. It just happens. Yeah. Decision making, on the other hand, decision making is the stuff that we, we sweat because we want to sweat the decision making fairly well. So let's look at what happened. Okay, so you mishandled the puck there and and, and it, it, as a result, we didn't make the clearance. But that's not the big problem. Let's watch what the big problem is. What was that? That was me doing a dumb thing. Well, do no, I have like that? <laughs> <laughs> I should have just gone to the boards. I don't know why I went back to center ice. I don't know what. I don't know what I was thinking. It's, it's weird, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. Um, but that's that's ultimately that's what that's what let it happen because it went basically basically straight to Chrissy and we know she's got a shot on her uh, and she didn't have a particularly good shot here because she had to swing around from a forehand or backhand or something wacky like that. But that's what created the opportunity. It's not the, the skill stuff is going to happen. You're going to whiff passes. Okay. It happens at all levels of the game. I think I've got another example of that in here somewhere. Um, 
I'm not sure where I put it. There's a great example of Pasternak scores a goal from a whiffed clearance. It's one of the, I can't remember who it is, but one of the guys from one of the other NHL teams is skating up and the game's all like this. There's one goal in it. It's the last minute of the game. It's pretty close. And this guy goes to do a dump pass and just leaves a puck behind. <laughs> and Pasternak just goes, oh, sweet. I'll have that and shoots an empty netter. Um, it happens. You make skill mistakes. Don't beat yourself up for making skill mistakes because it's it, it's just one of those things that gets better as you get more time and experience and practice and those sorts of things. Is those skill errors become less and less, but they don't go away. Uh, you're always going to make skill errors. It's the decision making errors that are the ones that we really want to sweat. Make good decisions. The skill errors we'll deal with. Okay, you're a bunch of beginners. You're going to make lots and lots and lots of skill errors. Um, but let's make good decisions. And that was that um, the shitty dribbler up the middle. That was the poor decision. Everything else, everyone was trying to do the right thing. It's just that thing happened. So how are you going to stop that from happening again, do you think? So Chrissy just get a crappy gets get a crappy backhander in the direction of the net. Roughly. And Pam's just trying to do the right thing and pick it up. It's just it's pinballed off her feet. That happens. Safety yeah, sports, yeah. Focus. I was going to say, yeah, just need to focus on decisions more. Like, if I don't see a good passing option, stick to the boards. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. That's the key to it. It's easy to say now with the benefit of, you know, hindsight and slow down videos, and we can chop it up in little pieces and see what led to it. But, but absolutely. Um, your, your default should always be, as a defensive player, the safety of the boards or around the back of the net. So, if you're not sure, play safe. And, and we know why, don't we? Any, do you remember the maths? Oh, yeah, the, like, takes, was it, 20, 20 yeah. scoring opportunities? So yeah. on average, you to score a goal. <laughs> Don't give away easy ones. And if we lose a scoring opportunity, is that a disaster? No, it's not a disaster, but... It's just, you know, one out of 20 is no big deal. You're going to lose lots of scoring opportunities, but they don't, they don't cost us goals. It's it's that thing. I'm not trying to beat up on you. It's just um, it's a, it's a really oh, good. Oh yeah, no, you're fine. Yeah, it's a great teaching opportunity to look at what what happened, why it happened, and how can we prevent it so that next week we're harder to score against. All of these are all, all opportunities to learn. Yep. No, definitely. Don't worry, Hazies, you did get one as well. That goal song, we've got to change it. It's awful. That was a pretty good shot through a pretty small gap. <laughs> Someone's getting promoted to C1 pretty soon. Um, what happened? Uh, a challenge is maybe a little bit high when we could have just backed back with the forward a little bit more. and Yeah, a little bit. It's not far off. Yeah. Okay. See, so you're obviously thinking about, you know, I'm trying to cut off the options here. And ultimately, you, you've pushed him wide. Probably a little high on the challenge. Really should be back at the hash marks. Um, but <laughs> then it ended up, it's still a shot from a fairly poor angle. But wh where it goes a little bit pear shaped is, sorry, come back, Mr. Annotator. He's, we've got this sitting here. So at that point, Drew should have been in. I'm not sure who that is with 20 on the back. Um, in 20's face, lifting the stick up so that Lily had less to worry about because she might have also been watching that loose player in the slot. I'm not sure. I, I, I'm sure she wouldn't remember either. Um, we've got basically a, almost a two on none there. Part of it's a skating skill thing too. Um, we need to get a little bit quicker at skating backwards, but that's you know time and practice. That's all that boils down to. So you can see on the initial movement back, 
All right. So what's the good thing about this is both our D there are starting to move back already. They've seen the threat coming and they're starting to move. This is good. All right. The rest is is a an improvement in skill that needs to come, but it's coming. It's getting better. A little bit higher on the challenge, um, but then we leave this forward. So I think that's Drew there needed to really follow 20 in. I think he's trying to. There's a good stick lift there. Okay, so he's doing the right thing. It's not bad defense. It's a bloody good shot. Mr. Adair. Good shot. Like right between a goalie's elbow and the thing. I'm not sure if you meant it or not, but it's a good shot. Um, I did. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say that too. Um, <laughs> just fling it in the direction of the net and hope. Oh, it went in the gap. I meant that. <laughs> There's been a little bit of practice. <laughs> I'm sure there has. It was it was a nice goal. It was a good play. Um, but you can see if if the, if the challenge had been a little bit lower, it would have forced you a bit wider. And probably made. It oh yeah, big time, big time. So it's it's that challenge thing. It's and it's always hard to judge. It just takes a lot of practice and a lot of just getting better and better and better at doing it. Here's the last goal for the Mac Daddy. Going for time, not too bad. Mm -hmm. Oh, God damn it, it's me again. Here's the thing. What you've done defensively here, that's actually the right thing to do. Okay, that's good. Why do you think that is the right thing to do? Because I'm, I'm telling you this, but let me see if you can work out why. Because mm, I'm kind of in the middle of the two. Mm. Yeah, cutting off the option. So the goalie only has to worry about the one player. It's a two on one, yeah? In a two-on-one, you go to the pass, not the puck carrier. So mm. the goalie only it's has easier to worry for about the goalie one. to exactly. see the person with the puck. The goalie has to worry about two players. The goalie is stuck in two minds, and you're much more likely to get scored against. There was a skill error. We went for a challenge higher up early and didn't get the puck. That happens. Okay, that was a judgment call, and that's just one of those things. It could have gone either way. Chrissy's pretty good at busting through the middle of a face-off. She's getting really good at that. You can see the importance of the face-off. This is now her second season playing centre and it's starting to show. Uh, again, she'll be moving up in a couple of weeks. So that's it's like it's good play for her. We know she's a bit of a bulldog at face-offs and she gets through them well and that's exactly what she's done. Um, and then defensively, we've done the right thing. We're trying to get back to fix it. We just got beaten on a two-on-one. It's an all play rush. And the D has done the right thing. I'll show you an example from another NHL thing. Um, See if I can find the, the covering one. Two and one, here we go. Here's quite a good example of it. I'll just show you this video. I follow, apologies, it's a bit pixelated. Hopefully you can see what's going on. So this is the Bruins again, just for change, um, against Carolina, I think two seasons ago. Anyway, so what have we got here on the ice? What can you see? Two on one. Yep. Pucks down on the corner. Let's watch the play. Has the defensive player gone to the puck carrier? No. Cutting off the option. And that's the important thing to do, which means the goalie only has to worry about the one player. And that's so critical. In the end, that player's tried to make a pass and it's been intercepted. <laughs> And then whack. <laughs> welcome to the welcome to the NHL. Um, McAvoy decides to teach Aho not to do that again because he went cross ice, which is always a really dangerous thing to do in NHL. You don't if you ever play NHL, don't skate, skate cross ice like that because you'll get hurt. Um, Thanks, Carl. I remember that when I make it. You know. <laughs> 
Uh, but you yeah, can... next season playing in HL. Yeah. <laughs> the scouts are coming. They're showing up. Um, but you, you can see how valuable that is. There's another one here. This is a better example. All right, so another situation. Classic two-on-one, yeah, from a rapid turnaround. Where should the Boston defender go? Back towards the goal. Yeah, and? Stick with the pass option, not yeah. the puck carrier. So let's watch what happens. He's pretty much done that, hasn't he? He hasn't gone across to the puck carrier until he's come right into that slot position. Now, at this point, there's a little bit of danger, but he's still got his stick in the way. So if you look, if this guy's trying to pass across there, what's in the way? Stick. Yeah, it's cut off the passing lane. You could get over it. You could maybe do a, you know, a, um, a lofted pass or get behind the stick and you'd have a chance of getting it, but it's not a particularly good chance. And the attacking opportunity is lost because the goalie only has to worry about the one player. It does mean the goalie has to worry about that one player. And if they've got a decent shot on him, there's still a reasonable chance at a, at a, at a goal, which is why two and one's one of the reasons why two and one is so dangerous. Because all you can do is take away the passing option. The goalie still has to make the save. But that's that, that's why. And that's that's examples at elite level of doing exactly what, what we need to do at you know at C two level. It's the same. It's just they do it quicker and with less skill errors. That's all. Mostly. <laughs> Let's have a look at Hazy's goal because they did get one. Jackson had a pretty good game. He made 17 saves. Saves. It was a good night for Jackson. So Hazy's actually played pretty well. They played good, good positional hockey. Let's have a look at this. He's popped the bottle. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I just noticed that. <laughs> Didn't pop it onto the onto the ground, but yeah. Um, so what happened? Just good Chase, positioning rebound. for rebounds, and yeah. he's yeah, just fought for it a couple of dirty times. Assessment. Yeah, it's a dirty goal, but dirty goals are great. I've got to finish it. <laughs> yeah. Orange. A little much left, I think. We're nearly done. So what else went wrong, though, defensively for the Mac Daddies? That high challenge right there we just saw. Yeah. I think that's Matt Zamet going across. Is that you, Matt? Are you here tonight? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> so in that instance, again, trust your goalie. Because you've got to cut off. I this. think I'm going to leave the meeting. No worries, Audrey. We will see you on Friday. Thank you. It's all re re recorded if you want to bore yourself to death and watch the rest of it. We're nearly finished. Uh, but, yeah, so, Matt, you probably could have gone across here and taken that one over. But it's it's a bit of a much of a much as when it gets that close, you kind of, yeah, do we go to the puck carrier or not? I, I don't think there's a right answer except what, what works because um, it's that close that, you know, you want to challenge the shot because it's not being challenged uh, at that close I, I, look, to be honest, I probably would have done the same thing. With the benefit of hindsight, it was the wrong option, but at the time, yeah, at the time it probably wasn't the wrong option. The time it was probably the right choice. Just we got a lucky bounce and then persistence. Just keep hammering away. Eventually, it might go in. <laughs> I felt a bit sorry for Jackson there. But at the same time, you know, he'd made quite a few saves. 
she had a pretty decent workout because Hazy's got, I think, at the end of that game, 17 or 18 shots, which is good. Just Jackson saved most of them. I like how just right before the replay, you see in the little corner, it catches when the leaf fell over. <laughs> this bit? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she'd been sprawling around. I think the play leading up to that, it had gone behind the net and she'd kind of been trying to track it and then got tangled up in her own feet and ended up facing the wrong way or something wacky like that. You might be able to see it in the replay because I think if we watch here... Yeah, you can. You can see what happens. So I'm not trying to you know, be cruel or anything, but you just watch that frame. <laughs> <laughs> just got tangled up in her feet and then had a bit of a lie down. It's all right, we've got a goal, so it's okay. Um, so that's them. Uh, I, I want to show you, actually, no, I'm not going to waste, I'm not going to waste your time going through the defensive zone face-offs because there are a whole stack of them that the Mac Daddies did and they were getting better throughout the game. So I don't think there's a lot of point kind of going through and dw dwelling on them. I've got them if, you, if we ever want to look at them. Um, I do want to show one thing though which i was quite happy with and that was an excellent piece of goaltending by lily let's have a look at this Now, I count four saves there. <laughs> That's a pretty good scramble by Lily. That's really good goal, really good goaltending. And the Hazy's needed to kind of fix it up a little bit because they got a bit, uh, un, uh, a bit down on numbers in defence. And as a result, there were far too many shots taken on Lily. She saved the first one, the second one, and the third one, and the fourth one, um, which is good. So she's improving a lot as well, which is terrific to see. Uh, I, I think we'll call it quits for that tonight. I'm not really going to go through all the other stuff on this. I don't, I don't think we particularly need to. Um, anything anyone wants to talk about briefly before we shut this one down? What are we going to work on next week or this Friday? I think we need to work on our changes because there's a few times there was a couple of long shifts. Yeah, that's that's typical for this stage of the season. Do you know why? Because we get that we're not having that adrenaline, and yeah, so we don't think about it. Yeah, you're more confident on the ice. It usually happens around about between games sort of five and six for most most players. Just jumping on the ice at first is an enormously stressful thing, and you get tired just from being on the ice. But but now you're kind of used to it, um, and so that initial oh I'm on the ice, panic, panic, panic. Um, not that you're panicking, but you certainly do um, get exposed to quite a lot of stress. That's that's a, a lot significantly reduced than it was for your first games. Uh, and so this is when you typically tend to start to long shift. And that's one of the reasons why, as you say, we need to be uh, we need to be really vigilant with keeping our shifts short and, and, and seeing also if we can speed up our changes. Um, that's it's a little skill, but it's a really important one. You've got to remember that you're you can't be replaced until you're about a meter and a half from the boards. Some refs will be a little bit more um, relaxed with it than others. But if you're coming for a change, you, you've got to haul us. You can't coast over. You've got to get over quickly because your teammate's waiting to get on. And they can't get on until you're nearly off. And in the meantime, we're exposed. So good observation, Leighton. Thank you. Anything else? No, we're all done. Okay, Friday night, um, there's a game at 6.30 and a game at 10.30. Watch the Pro League. That's going to be good. I know I say that every week, but but it will be. Um, the theme the theme will be the same as this theme, do, the same as last week, do what we do about it. Pretty much all the way through from now until the end of the season, all both teams are going to be working on, unless there's something in particular that we identify. Uh, it's mostly going to be consolidation. Just do get better at what we do. 
uh, if we know our plays, or at least we have an idea of what our plays are, we know what our break out is, we know how important the movement of the wingies are, we know how important the back check is through the neutral zone now, that's been hopefully hopefully become a little bit more clear. Um, our wingers are starting to do it better. Our centers are starting to read that better and starting to read the play better. Um, time and exposure and, and repetition now is what we're working on. And we will continue to improve each week as we go through and do it. So I will see you on Friday. Don't forget, we've also got training on Saturday afternoon. Um, wear your jerseys, so wash them. Uh, it's not hard to do. And um, we'll have a training session on Saturday. I think I've already published the training program in the Facebook group. Remind me if I haven't. Yep. I did. I have. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll pop it up again probably on Friday as well, just so there's a reminder of it and it'll be printed out that sort of stuff too. I may even email it out to make sure everyone's got less of an excuse to say, oh, I didn't read it. Um, <laughs> I don't expect you to, to remember it, but I do expect you to at least have an inkling of what we're going to be working on. It'll be some team skills and then some individual skills working on um, con containing and then we're finishing off with something that everyone loves, even the goalies. We'll be finishing off with, um, with some penalty shots, which are good fun. So I will see you on Friday. Those of you that are available tomorrow morning, I might see you at Ice HQ at the Stick and Puck. I will see some of you tomorrow evening at uh, Hockey School and the rest of you I'll see on Friday. Have a great rest of your week. And we'll Thanks, see you. Carl. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. Enjoy.